This is Dave Thomas and today I am building the SBR Fusion and I'm actually doing a little bit different kit so the the kit that's shown here is the regular one and I have the commemorative virtual Narcon 2022 kit uh, and basically the big difference is that it's got this different uh, decal that will wrap around the body so it's uh, a red theme rather than a green one here, but otherwise it's the same. Uh, one other thing this does have is it comes with a bonus uh, avionics sled that does not come with the normal kit. Um, otherwise it's all going to be the same. And if we open this up and check the parts here, um, the numbers I have penciled in here are for entering this into rock sim, so don't worry about that. Um, and also there's a typo here. Um, there's only one 9-inch airframe tube, not two. And I checked specifically with SBR about that. Okay, so if we go through the rest of it here. We have a 3D printed nose cone, and this actually comes in two pieces here. And this will take some special assembly that we'll get into here in just a moment. Right. Here's one of the body tubes. Okay, that's the 9 inch one, and then here's the main body tube. Okay, it's pre slotted, and it's even pre marked for the uh, rail guides. Right, we have three tubing connectors. So there's one, and two, and three. Um, one of these will be used for the shoulder of the nose cone. Another one will be used to join the two body tubes. And then the third is used right in front of the motor mount to act as a strengthening tube. Right, decal sheet, we already saw that. Uh, we have this fin alignment guide here. Okay, nylon shock cord. Motor mount. Um, and then it has another motor tube. This is for an adapter that comes with it. So this can run on either 38 millimeter motors or 29 millimeter motors. And then we have a bag that's full of fins and centering rings and all that good stuff. I've already gone through it to make sure that everything is here. Um, but this is all the small parts, including the motor retainer and the rail guides and some uh, other hardware there. Alright, and that should be everything. So I'm going to clear this away and we will get started. Now here on the first page of the instructions, um, it's got this uh, very important note. And basically it says that the 3D printed nose cone by itself is not very strong and we have to reinforce it with epoxy. And the actual step in the instructions for this is way down here toward the end. Okay, so here um, we will first epoxy the two halves together. Okay, making sure those are nice and straight. And then it recommends painting this with thinned epoxy. Now I'd never tried this before, so I, I actually did this on a piece of scrap material. Uh, but basically they are using um, rubbing alcohol to thin 15 minute epoxy. Or they've actually got 12 minute epoxy. I'm not sure where they get that. I've never seen 12 minute epoxy. But 15 mil will work fine. And the idea here is then we'll paint this whole surface with the thin epoxy and then also do the same thing on the inside of the nose cone. So we'll have epoxy reinforcement uh, both inside and out. And then we're going to need to sand this. Okay, since it was 3D printed, it's still very rough. And so if you want a really smooth finish on this, we're going to have to do a considerable amount of sanding. So I'm actually going to start with this part first, and then we'll go back to the beginning of the instructions. The instructions suggest 
sanding or carving, or in this case filing, um, the connection point here so that the two halves of the nose cone connect easily but firmly and straight. And so I'm just going to take a small hobby file here and lightly go around the edges because it mostly fits. There we go. Okay, so it fits firmly that way. Um, we are going to have a bit of a lip here. I'm going to see if I can sand just a little bit of that down. still will require some sanding when we're done with it, but for now we can at least glue it together. So I'm going to start out with some epoxy here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and glue this together and then use the remainder of the epoxy to do the coating inside and outside. So I'm using 15 minute epoxy. Um, you could probably use 30 if you wanted to. 15 would probably cure too quickly. I've got a measuring cup here so I can get close to equal amounts of the two parts. stir this together I'm going to use a tongue depressor you can also use a popsicle stick or just a small dowel um, these tongue depressors are actually a bit too wide I'm going to crack one in half here All right, and we'll stir this up this I'm going to put down some foil. This way I won't get epoxy on my cutting surface here. All right, give this one more bit of stirring. to apply this to the inside now normally if I was just going to do this to glue the nose cone together I would have used a whole lot less there's a generous amount of epoxy on there, and then I'm just going to mount that on top. Okay. See a little bit squirting out there, so I'll just take the tissue. And if I moisten that with a little bit of isopropanol, rubbing alcohol, I can just smooth that away. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that's on straight. 
Alright, now for the thinning part, I'm going to transfer this into a bigger cup. And the instructions don't specify the exact amount of thinning we need. But I'm going to start with about a one-to-one -one ratio here. And use my stick here to continue cleaning out epoxy from the mixing cup here. And it looks like it's making globs. Don't worry about it. It will mix together. Okay, I'm just going to put all that in. And I'll save this in case I need to add more alcohol to it. thicker you can add more epoxy or less alcohol. Some people can develop a hypersensitivity, an allergic-like reaction to epoxy with repeated exposure. So it's not a bad idea to wear gloves when you're in a situation where you're probably going to get some on yourself. And I'm going to start out by just pouring some of this down into the nose cone. And then I'm going to just turn it so you can see down inside there. All right, so if I rock it back and forth, I will coat the inside. Now notice here, um, there's actually another lip in here. This is where the um, shoulder adapter will go. So one of those couplers we saw earlier, it's going to be put into here. And I'm going to try to avoid getting epoxy up in this area. Um, that way I don't make it too thick there and end up having to do additional sanding to get the coupler in. Okay, now you really can't see much from this angle, but what I'm doing is causing the epoxy to flow back toward the base of the nose and I'm just rotating it to evenly coat the entire surface. Now you can see that in there. Okay, so it's got that kind of yellowish cast to it. And that's what we want. I'm going to bring it back again. Um, but if you can control this just right, you can bring it all the way up to the uh, lip that the coupler will use. And then just let it fall back before it gets inside. Now if you do get some inside the lip at the base part of the, the cone here, you can just take uh, another tissue or paper towel with uh, rubbing alcohol on it and use that to clean it out. Okay, so I've got the entire inside coated uh, except for most of this region here where the coupler will go in. Um, when I put the coupler in, it's going to have full strength epoxy in there, so it should be fine. And now I'm just going to take a tissue here with a little more alcohol and wipe off the shoulder area. There we go. Okay, and then there's a I have a plug down there, up there in the very tip of the nose cone, that's fine. OK, 
Okay, now just so I can do this all at once, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and tip the rest of this out. Um, if you want to do this in steps, you could go ahead and let this part harden and then do the outside. And that would give you a kind of a plug up here in the nose that would make it even stronger. I think I've got enough there. I'm going to go ahead and tip out the excess. And when you come back to this after it's cured, if it looks like it's not thick enough to your taste, you can always come back and add more. Alright, now for the outside surface, they recommend using an old paintbrush, one that you can just throw away. So I've got this paintbrush. It's not exactly old and throwaway, but it's one I never use. And so here we can just slather this on. And we may or may not be able to clean out the ex excess epoxy. We'll see how it goes. Right, but here's where I really want my foil surface because we're going to have a lot of epoxy running down this. Now once most of it runs down, we'll go ahead and remove the foil. And we can put some paper towel or something under there to catch whatever remains. So 20 milliliters of epoxy thinned with another 20 milliliters of alcohol was more than enough. Okay, I'm going to go back and put this onto a clean sheet of foil with some paper towel on it. And then I'm going to let this simply harden overnight. The epoxy on my nose cone has now been setting overnight. And you can see here I've got a lot more runoff that uh, came down off of it during that time. The epoxy is still just a little bit soft, but it turns out that's going to be helpful. Um, is this way I can trim off all this stuff that got on the bottom here. So I'm just going to gently pull this away. take a hobby knife here and just trim away this while it's still a little bit soft. See, this also means that the uh, epoxy used on the inside is also run back over where the coupler will go, and that just means we're going to need to do a little bit of sanding um, when we're ready to put the coupler on. This is like the worst runny nose ever. Okay, so I'm going to let this continue to cure. And we'll go back to the rest of the rocket here. So now I'm moving from the nose cone back to the beginning of the instructions here. 
and we're going to put together the motor mount. And so the first thing to do is take the uh, T-nuts here, or blind nuts as they call them, and we're going to hammer these into the first ring. I'm just getting, they fit really tightly there. Okay, and the instructions say that you can add a little bit of thick super glue around these if you want. Um, mainly that's to hold them in place while you're working with them. Eventually, um, we'll have a layer of epoxy that goes on this side and that will help anchor them from the other side. But here I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Right, we don't need a lot, just enough to hold it in place. And you want to be very careful not to get it in the threads. Okay, now when you hammer these in, you'll want to support it on either side, either with a couple of small blocks or on the ledge of a workbench or something. I'm going to do this off camera because I don't have a good place to do this in my studio space. Now here you can see where I ran into a bit of a problem here. Um, they didn't like being hammered in too well, and now I've got some splits here. And aside from ordering another ring, probably the best thing I can do at this point is put some epoxy on this and clamp it down. So I'm going to do that um, off camera here. Now fortunately I was going to take a little detour at this point anyway. Um, if you look here in the instructions, the whole motor mount is put together and the shock cord is installed before putting everything into the rocket. I'm going to do this just a little bit differently. This is, a little, this is simpler to do, um, but I like to be able to put internal fillets in the fin tabs and where it mounts to the motor mount here. And so the way to do that is to install the first two rings, put the motor mount in at that point, and then after everything is fitted and we put the fins on, then we slide the aft ring on to finish the whole thing off. Here I've mixed up a small amount of epoxy. Um, this is 15 minute. You could use 5 or 30. Just depends on how quick you, quickly you would like it to set up. All right, and I'm going to just apply this onto the broken region here. I'm just using the handle of a cotton applicator for this. Now this part normally I would have done after installing the ring. I'll go ahead and just put some epoxy all around blind nut where it protrudes there. And then do so on the other side. All right, now I'm also going to do the inside and outside edges. And this means I will have to sand them off again. So it's going to be a little bit more to do, but not too bad.
Okay, and I'm just going to let this cure on some aluminum foil so it does not soak into anything and will be relatively easy to remove once again. Well, my repairs to the aft ring are finishing up there. We can go ahead and come back to the motor mount itself. And according to the instructions, we need to draw a line on the tube. Uh, but in my kit, that's already been done for me. Okay, and the other thing I've done is mark the ends fore and aft so I don't get this confused and end up putting it together backwards. And so we need to test fit these rings. Right, so this one should be all the way at the end. It is very tight. Okay, and then um, actually this is the end one. That was the middle one, but it didn't come over. Alright, that one doesn't want to go over either. So the first thing to do is to sand these out. And here I'm just going to use some 100 grit sandpaper. If you've got something coarser, that would work fine too. fit. Now even though I'm going to put the aft ring on last, it is necessary to have the aft ring in order to properly position where the fins will be attaching to the motor mount. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to hit, go ahead and do some marking here. So the forward ring should be a quarter inch from the forward end. So I'm just going to mark it right here. And the aft ring should be half an inch from the aft end. Right there. Okay, and then in order to space the middle ring, we'll use one of the fins to go between the aft ring and the middle ring there. And so whatever that space is, that's where the middle ring will go. It'll actually be up here somewhere. Okay, so after the epoxy is cured and my repaired aft ring, we'll go on and put the others on. The repair to the aft centering ring is complete. Um, it still looks a little rough, but it's very strong now. And what I've done here is simply dry fitted all of the rings on. Now on one side of each ring, there is an alignment mark here. And these alignment marks should align with the line that you either drew on the motor mount or that came with it. And then we'll want to find the actual spacing of that middle ring by using a fin here. So the fin should fit in between the two rings, and I haven't got it quite where I need it yet. So we'll just move that up a little bit more. Okay, so about there, and I can bring this down again. Now my forward ring and my aft ring, um, I put at the marks that we made earlier. So it just needs to come down a little bit, that was probably too much. Here. Okay, and then I'm just going to rotate this around. I'm going to go over that blind nut there. Okay, now unfortunately, no, that's that's pushing okay there. So that all looks good. All right. So now we can go ahead 
and I'm going to mark this in pencil for that middle ring there. Take these back off. All right. Now I'm going to roughen this up to take the glossy sheen off this and make the epoxy stick better. Uh, I'm going to do a, a ring at each of the marks here. And then this region down in here where the fins are going to go, I'm going to essentially sand that whole area so I don't have to try and line up sanded areas with the fins later on. So that gives me the fin area and also the, the aft centering ring area here. Get a little bit more. All right, and then up here at the forward area, I'm just going to sand around the forward end of the tube here. Now you may notice here where this is kind of starting to fall apart. We'll fix that in just a minute with a little bit of super glue. or epoxy for that matter. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put these back on. Alright, and for my number two ring here, I'm going to put it past my mark a little bit. Alright, and then my number three ring, which is the forward most ring, it's going to go on here. And again, I'm going to actually move it past my marking a little bit there. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put the aft ring on. There we go. Now I still haven't glued anything, and now I'm going to just do a test fit into the rocket body tube itself. You can kind of rotate the rings to get them in. That's really trying to go off center there. All right, so if you get a ring that does not want to go in easily, it probably needs a little bit of sanding. So here I'm going to sand the outside. Try this again. There we go. All right. Now the aft ring here is maybe especially problematic um, because of a little bit of epoxy there and the, the deformity that's been caused. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and sand it some more off camera and then we'll try it again. Alright, I finished sanding my um, centering rings here so they all fit into the body tube fine. And now I've mixed up some 15 minute epoxy. Alright, and epoxied both sides of the forward centering ring here. And then epoxied the forward side of the middle centering ring. All right, I'm just going to scrape this around a bit. Now, I've been careful not to get epoxy in this slot right here. That's where the shock cord is going to go. 
So do be careful of that. And I can, I'm just going to use the curvature of my applicator here to kind of fill in the fillet, so to speak. Okay, and this excess epoxy up here is not going to hurt a thing. Just going to smooth it around there. Okay, now if you want, you can go ahead and epoxy the back side. Um, just be careful not to get too much. There is this little miter here, and that's so that if you've got to fill it in place already, um, it will not impinge upon the proper seating of the fin. Okay, now the whole reason I've done my motor mount in this fashion is so that once this is dry, I will install it into the body tube and then put the fins in and I will still have access in here, which means I can create internal fillets for the fin against the motor mount and also against the inside of the body tube. Okay, and during that time there's always a lot of epoxy that runs down here and that will form the fillet for the aft side of the second ring there. And then I'll be able to, when everything is done, I can put my aft ring on, slide into that into position, and then do a fillet around it, and also just put a layer of epoxy all the way around here. Okay, so for now, I do need to let this part of the rocket cure, and then we'll come back and mount the shock cord. While the motor mount rings are drying, I'm going to come back to the nose cone here. Now the epoxy had set up and I've done some initial sanding here with 100 grit sandpaper. And this has taken the sheen off as well as a lot of the raised areas of the epoxy there. So now you can kind of see there are bands that are dull and bands that are shiny. The shiny spots are the low spots and then the, the dull spots are the higher spots that have been sanded down. Uh, depending on your level of perfectionism and uh, OCD, uh, you may want to put a second coat of epoxy over this again. Um, you may want to do more sanding. You may want to do multiple coats of sanding and epoxy. Uh, I'm going to go through here, and first of all, we've got this patch here. It's relatively long. It goes about halfway, almost halfway around the nose cone, right where the... Um, joint between the top and bottom halves is. And I think this is just an artifact of the, the 3D printing, but it's a definite low spot here. And so I'm going to add some plastic model putty here to help fill that in. Okay. This is a uh, easier to work with than epoxy, and this at this point we don't need it for its structural soundness. And I'm just going to smooth this around with an applicator here. The nice thing about this is it dries in 30 minutes to an hour, and is easily sanded afterward. Um, it does go through a lot of sandpaper. This clogs up sandpaper really, really quickly. Okay, so that's already starting to set up. Check for any other really obvious low spots. That looks pretty good. You can see where that cheap brush I used lost the fiber in there. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and then sand out the high spots there. Here I've sanded down the model putty that I put on earlier, and now I'm going to take this and put a light coat of primer on it, and this will help show me where I still have imperfections that may need filling before we do the full priming job. The nose cone has had two coats of filler and sandable sealer on this, and so now I'll take some uh, more sandpaper and knock down the high spots, and it'll probably need another coat or two to fill in all the low spots here. But this is looking much smoother than it did originally. 
I did some additional sanding here to knock down even more of the high spots. And now you can see, um, in some places I've gone back down to the epoxy layer here, and you can see how the uh, primer fills in the holes and valleys here. I also ended up taking a small file to the very edge here. There was a lot of buildup from the printing process, and so this was just easier to, to file down and then hit with some more sandpaper. So I'm going to give this some more primer, let it dry, and do this again. And depending on how smooth you want your nose cone to be, it may take um, three or four cycles of, of priming and sanding and priming and sanding to get all of the ridges knocked down and all the valleys filled in. My epoxy is all hardened here, and now what we need to do is attach the shock cord. And first of all, we would just want to measure an endpoint. So if you look in the illustration here, uh, we're running the shock cord directly down the motor tube to approximately here. And so if you'd like something better than approximately there, I'm going to go with about four centimeters. So I'll just put a pencil mark there. Okay, and then we're going to take one end of the shock cord and feed it through the slot. So we have the, the slot here on the forward ring. And if the, the fraying gets to be too much here, you can just take a lighter and melt that together. I don't think I need to worry about it. And then the second slot is lower down in the ring here. This is the one we careful not to fill in with epoxy while we're gluing here. Okay, and so this should lay flat and go down to the mark that we made here. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is make up a little bit of epoxy and just run that line of epoxy down here and also down along here and then we're going to press the shock cord down into that all the way up and then let that harden before we go to install the motor mount into the body tube. Here I've made up a small batch of 15 minute epoxy. If you want you could use 5 minute on this, um, shouldn't be any problem. All right, and so here I'm going to first of all do the lower section so that I don't have to move it later. And note that I am wearing gloves here because there's a good chance my fingers are going to come into contact with the epoxy. And I'm just going to spread this all the way down. And this can be fairly thick because we don't want it to come off. Now, if you've built other high-power rockets before, you might consider, um, instead of putting the shock cord on this way, um, instead putting an eye bolt on that forward um, engine or centering ring, and then attaching the, the shock cord that way, which is commonly what we see in most modern high-power kits. The only real problem with mounting it this way is it's almost impossible to change the shock cord if you need to. So this shock cord will have a finite life. Okay. But I'm just going to go ahead and build this with the exception of that rear centering ring as the instructions indicate. And so I'm just going to squeeze that up there. Now I'll come back to this and smooth out the epoxy there. Um, what I want to do up here though is pull this up so that it slides on the forward ring. We don't want to change anything on the, the middle ring there. Okay, and I'm just going to put in the rest of the epoxy here. Okay, and I'm going to pull this back 
and then press this into the epoxy as well. And here I'm just kind of moving it back and forth so I get some epoxy up into the slot there. And I'll put some more on it here in just a minute. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and pull this taut all the way down. Okay, I'm going to take a little more epoxy here. And I'll put that into the slot on both sides. And this is so that when it does pull on the shock cord during ejection, that it won't try and peel this upward. I'm just going to smooth along here. All right, and then I'm going to carefully tuck the rest of the shock cord down into the motor mount. You might have to unfold and refold it, and I think I can just do it directly out of the package here is we don't want to get any epoxy on the rest of the shock cord as we're gluing the motor mount into the body tube. All right, so once again I'm going to set this aside and let it finish curing and then we'll mount the, the motor mount into the rocket body tube when we get back. One last thing I'm going to do before mounting the motor mount inside the body tube is I'm going to take a little bit of regular super glue here and I'm going to put it on the inside edge of the body tube and just let that soak in. And what this will do is help keep the cardboard from fraying as the centering rings go in. And it also just strengthens the cardboard in general here along the edges. So if it gets bumped or knocked, um, it's less likely to damage the body tube. And this is optional. Okay. And then once you've got that in there, you can simply take a tissue or a paper towel and just wipe out the excess. It does not need to stay in there for very long. Okay, try not to glue your fingers together. And now this can uh, dry for about 10 minutes or so and we'll be ready to put the motor mount in. And then um, as we'll I don't want to put this in now, but we'll dry fit it one more time to make sure that all the rings slide in easily. Now that the super glue has dried on the inside here, you can see the, the dark ring showing there. I'm just going to use some very fine sandpaper here. This is 320 grit. You can use 220 as well. And here I'm just going to knock down any of the super glue that is standing up here so that we're not decreasing the diameter of the tube. And this shouldn't take a whole lot. All right, here I've got my motor mount. First two rings are completely epoxied. My shock cord is in. The rest of the shock cord is tucked away inside the motor mount tube so that we don't get any epoxy on it while we put this in. I have my aft ring installed, but not glued in here. And then make sure that all the lines here are lined up. And when we put this in, we need to make sure that the blind nuts and the shock cord do not interfere with the fin slots. 
So I'm just going to dry fit this. Okay, and so when this is in place, the second mid centering ring should be just beyond there. It should be flush with the fin slot all the way around. All right, if it's not, that means I didn't quite get it in square. Just push it forward so that the last part is there. So whichever part is dipping down the furthest net needs to be the first furthest up. Now I don't know, let's see if we can get enough light in here. All right, what I am doing is looking down into the fin slot and making sure that nothing is going to be in the way there. Now here, need some more room here. All right, in this case, this blind nut right there is right in line with the fin slot. So I don't want that. I'm just going to turn everything a little bit and then recheck. Okay, so looking down this fin slot, so I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's clear. Changing over, that one's clear. And coming around here, that one's clear. And one more check of the back. Okay, so on the aft end, the blind nuts are not going to interfere with either of the or any of the fins. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some more epoxy here, and we'll put this in. Okay, I have some 15 minute epoxy here, and let's see if we can get a good, I don't think I can, not a really good view, um, but what we need to do is be able to extend our epoxy up past the fin slots here. We don't want any epoxy dropping down in this part of the body tube right now, so I'm going to use this wood applicator with a cotton tip on it. I'll just take a little bit of this at a time. Alright, make sure it's not going to drip, and then I'm going to extend this all the way past the fin slots there. And I unfortunately, it's really hard to show this. Things there. Okay, and I do recommend using at least 15 minute epoxy. You could use 30 minute if you wanted to. Um, five minute though might set up too quick on you before you're ready for everything to be permanently attached to each other. So I don't recommend using a five minute epoxy. And in general, the longer the set time, the stronger the bond is going to be. And we want a really strong bond here. Yeah, I just can't get a good angle on that, so you'll have to take my word for it. Good. Okay, so once more, we need to slide this in, okay, um, and making sure that the middle ring here gets past the, the edge of the fin slot and that we don't have the shock cord or the two blind nuts there interfering with our fins. Now what's going to happen is we're going to put this in until the back of the motor mount is flush with the back of the rocket tube here. And then we'll use the screws that came with this to act as motor retainers. We'll put those in and that will allow us to pull that third ring back out once the epoxy has set. Alright, so here we go. Right, most of the epoxy is going to end up on that forward ring. And maybe a little bit on the middle ring, but that's okay, because once we take the aft ring back off, we'll be able to um, add more epoxy to it. Okay, so I'm going to stand this up here on its end, push that all the way up, 
All right, and at least at this, you know, that's I'm going to have to rotate that a bit there because my blind nut was interfering with this slot. Looking up. Okay, so now I'm checking that um, center ring. And I actually want this as close to the slot as I can, so it's going to make a firmer mount that way. So even if my motor tube sticks out just a little bit, that's fine. Alright, so now I'm going to check inside the slots here to make sure we're clear. Okay. And on this one now I can see the shock cord. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Okay, that all looks good. And the other thing we can do, once we remove the uh, aft ring and do all the stuff inside and then put it back on, we can rotate that aft ring to make sure that the T-nuts or the blind nuts are where they need to be as well. Okay, so that looks like everything is now in position where it needs to be. Okay, now you can see a little bit of the aft ring there, but remember it's not in permanent place yet. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry or cure um, for at least an hour before I do anything else with it.